first, we're going to talk about the fact, I'm sure you heard this, Brian, that daily marijuana use now outpaces daily drinking. Did you hear about this? No, but I'm glad. <laughs> How are you surprised? How I am surprised. This is big news. Daily or near daily marijuana use is now more common than similar levels of high frequency drinking in the United States, according to an analysis of survey data over the past four decades. So they've been watching this go up over time, and boom, it is now surpassed drinking. This was a study done by Carnegie Mellon University, and it was published in the journal addiction. The estimates in 2022, an estimated 17.7 um, million people used marijuana daily or near da daily. Do you count yourself among those people? Yes. We won't. I, well. <laughs> am, oh, I mean, uh, no, I am a functional pothead, I would say. Oh, well, the, now the secret is out. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm pretty open about it. I function well with it. So for me, it's not like anything bad or anything like that. Well, this is compared to 14.7 million daily or near daily drinkers. And I will say I have probably a beer or two every day. I mean, we all have our our things. I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, a little bit of relaxation. <laughs> we all have our thing. The per capita rate of marijuana use has increased 15 fold, 15 times from 1992 to 2022. So over the past, what is that, 30 years, things have gone up dramatically. The survey used the National Survey on Drug Use and Health. The survey is a highly regarded source of estimates of tobacco, alcohol, and drug use in the United States, which brings us to play Play this game, marijuana fact or fiction. Brian, I think you're going to be able to weigh in on this. Okay. Um, this is from brainfacts.org. You can weigh in too, Sam, if you happen to know okay. these. <laughs> Sam's like, I don't partake. <laughs> well, <laughs> Ooh, who knows? I'm 21. It's, it's legal. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, marijuana fact or myth or fact or fiction, I, you know. Um, today's marijuana is more important. Potent. Today's marijuana is more potent than it was in previous gen generations. What's the verdict, folks? Oh, fact. For fact. sure. Fact. Yes, today's marijuana is more potent. It's a lot stronger, like a hell of a lot stronger. And it's a lot stronger in terms of the THC content, which is the active ingredient. You probably know. But do you know what the THD stands for? Is it the turpentine? Terp terpine? Tetrahydrocannabinol. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> I should probably stop smoking. <laughs> I don't think most people know the, the long name. They just no, know the THC. The scientific name of it. The next one, next one, fact or myth, fact or fiction. Marijuana isn't that dangerous. I would say fact. <laughs> ah, okay. I'd go, with, I'd go with depends on the vices you use to do it. I feel like smoking is more dangerous than like edibles, you know? Ah, very well, interesting. I've had some crazy um, experiences with edibles. So, <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, uh, I would say the edibles are a little dangerous. Well, you're both in right now that you're put bringing that in. This is a mixed result. While it may be safer than some drugs, it does have its own risks. The level of danger really does depend on an individual's health, their family risk factors, as well as the potency of the products. You guys were both right. And how frequency how frequently you use them. So the teetotalers out there, marijuana people who do not use very much, really can get knocked for a loop. Also the there's a psychiatric risk. This can trigger psychosis. And for those who are predisposed, it could trigger a d psychotic disorder. And this is actually well known. Yes. Yeah, and I don't know about that. And sometimes I'm like, am I crazy? Am I going crazy? Am I losing it now? <laughs> also, if you have harder lung risks, um, smoking can certainly be a risk. Okay, next one. Fact or fiction, marijuana is a gateway drug. Do you know what a gateway drug is? <laughs> yeah, opens the gate for all the other ones. I I don't do any other drugs I other feel like than that's pot. So fiction. Yeah, so fiction for sure. This is actually mixed. So there's an association, but most drug users start with marijuana. Most drug users of all types do use marijuana, especially in the beginning, al marijuana, alcohol. But we can all say alcohol is a gateway drug. That's but, what I was going to say. And I was like, do those drug addicts, did they start with alcohol and then 
climbed into the well, drug now section. we're seeing things go the opposite way which is so interesting I mean, things are just kind of shifting around. Alcohol is falling out of favor, which much to my own chagrin. But, you know, more for me. So most drug users start with marijuana, but most marijuana users do not go on to become dependent on other drugs. So you guys were pretty correct in that sense that, you know, most people who use marijuana are not going to go on to become other drug users or frequent other drug users. Marijuana sets off the same reward pathway in the brain as other substances, so people, who, again, who are predisposed to addiction might be set down that road. And that makes sense. I would say that would happen with alcohol, too, if they're already prone to be addicted to it. Yeah. So, yeah, and to follow up on that same thing, marijuana isn't addictive, what would you say? This is the one I, I used to always oh. hear. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm addicted, but I do enjoy it. <laughs> That's what I always say. I always say that when, I, when I'm when i not like in a place where I should be smoking or I'm able to smoke, I can stop, no problem. It's when like I have the opportunity and like I enjoy it, oh, yeah. I will. If it's around, yeah. why not? You, <laughs> you know? know, and if it's legal, even better. It is a myth, marijuana, that marijuana isn't addictive. This is false, and you know this is kind of interesting to me because um, it's one that you know, as a psychologist, the minute it became legal, I used to deal with people who had pretty severe addictions, and they used to always say, but I got a prescription and it isn't addictive, and we'd have to go through that whole thing. So while only a mar ma minority of marijuana users, so a minority, about 9%, will meet criteria for addiction, about 17% of adolescents who use do become addicted, and 25 to 50% of daily users will develop an addiction. I mean, I would say it's like not as bad as the other addictions and i mean oh well you know like the most uh, the drug that has the highest addictive potential is actually smokable speed and so that puts cigarettes right up there cigarettes uh crack cocaine smoking meth those can be all extreme they have high addiction potential so you know marijuana is uh, you know it's an hallucinogen so and it just it doesn't have that same potential for instant addiction that those other drugs do. So fact or myth, you can't overdose on marijuana. <laughs> I feel like you definitely can. <laughs> I think, like, are we talking about overdoses in, like, dying, over, like dying overdose? Because I think, no. uh, oh, okay. I mean, you can definitely have too much, but I, I think it takes, like, a lot to actually overdose overdose but like you can freak yourself out yeah no yeah, it's you a, can have a crazy trip and everything <laughs> but you won't like die from the marijuana i would say you know and that's a good i'm sure there are people again if they have some kind of predisposed health condition or something else going on or puts them in a safety position where their health becomes at risk um say if they're driving or walking along a cliff i would think those would not be good positions um but at the same time yes you're right we don't see that the kinds of deaths we do see in some other drugs um so it's unlikely to overdose on marijuana but there are Two types of ER admissions that this article points out are commonly seen. Um, one is the worsening of a psychiatric condition, which is particularly psychosis. Uh, paranoia, seeing things, hearing things, those types of things. I don't know who could have ever had that happen. And the capper, uh, um, cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. Do you guys know what that is? Cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. No. It's uh, hyper, you know, a lot, and emesis throwing up. It's cyclical vomiting syndrome of regular users who start throwing up uncontrollably, and it's very hard to treat. You basically have to not use or go way out, way down in your use. Dang, I hope that never happens to me. <laughs> Um, also, infrequent users who've had too much and it hits their system much harder. And I debated telling this story, but this is a real story from my life. When I was 19 years old, I lived in Manhattan. I lived in New York City. 
and uh, I was walking down the street, and it was very cold. And I had one of those three-quarter length wool coats that was probably from the 40s. You could go to the thrift store and buy them, and they kept you nice and warm in the wintertime. And so I'm walking down the street, and, you know, New York City back in the 80s, which is when I was there, was not New York City of today. It wasn't the glamour shot that you often see. It was pretty much... um, I don't know, somewhat of a hellscape, although it was probably one of the most vibrant art scenes I had ever seen at that time. But I was walking down the street and I saw a drug deal go down (laughs) that was then hit by the cops. And the cops, um, they, they were undercover. And they they go, you know, you're under arrest. I mean, literally right in front of me, the guy had a giant bag, like a gallon sized bag of marijuana. And he he started running and he threw the bag and it landed literally at my feet. (laughs) So what do you do? I mean, the cops were running after the guy. Oh, and they didn't see that it landed in, on your feet? No, they did not. They didn't care about the drug, I guess. They wanted to get the guy. And um, so I picked up the uh, bag, and I put it under my coat, and I walked home. <laughs> I was to like to clean up the city as much as possible. Why would you leave trash on the floor? You so were just helping. I got home... Uh, and I lived in a single apartment with two other people. Yes, that is how what it's like to live in New York City. So I lived in a single with two roommates. And um, my roommate, I'm like, look what, what I found. And he's like, oh, um, he goes, I don't really, I'm not a big marijuana user. Um, and I'm like, neither am I. What do we do with all this marijuana? Like, I didn't, you know, it wasn't my thing. And... Um, I'm like, oh, I'll call up some friends and see if they want some. So I'm like, I called up some friends and all these people, like my friends came and of course they were very excited. Uh, This is terrible that, you know, but I was 19. This is what a 19 year old does. And then all these weirdos kept showing up at my door and I'm like, okay, that's it. We're not going to do this anymore. We're not giving out anymore. That's it. And what do we do with all this stuff? And we like, well... Um, neither one of us wanted to smoke because we weren't really smokers. So we go, hey, we've heard you can put it in brownies. So we put just a huge amount into a brownie mix and we made brownies. And then we had zero education. There was no internet. And we, we had the brownie and we're like, do you feel anything? And I'm like, no, I don't feel anything. Do you? No. I'm like, okay, so we'll have another brownie. And we're like, do you feel it? No. So we had another brownie, and we both ate half the brownie mix, and it started to hit. Well, we both, it hit us so hard. We weren't users. We hit us so hard. We went down to the ground, and neither of us could get up for a solid day. I don't know where my third roommate was. Think, you know, it's too bad. He could have saved us. We, we were down on the ground. We could not get up. I couldn't even lift my arm to call somebody. <laughs> I couldn't get up from the ground, and neither could he. For a solid day, we had to wait till overnight till it cleared. <laughs> This was the most horrific experience, I can't even tell you. And it cured me of any curiosity. But I will tell you, yes, you can overdose on marijuana. And that was the good example of it. It's the brownies that will get you. (laughs) I've gotten got by the brownies too, where I went on a snowboarding trip. I never made it on the snow. (laughs) I sat on the bench tripping (laughs) the entire time. I once I don't know that I didn't know that um, edibles have like a half life. So like <laughs> one day I had like a free day. So I took like however much I took in like the morning and like was like kind of like high throughout the day. And then um, my dad knows this story, which is why I feel like I can say it on the internet. <laughs> um, and then like that night I was like, all right, like I'm fine. I'm gonna take the same amount. And it was like a lot for like what I usually take. And I was like down i was shaking i was like i couldn't fall asleep because whenever i closed my eyes i felt like i was falling but then whenever i opened my eyes i was like i need like i don't know what to do it was the worst and like i think after like an hour i finally like managed to go to sleep 
They'll get you. The so edibles. Bad. I'm that scared was like of the edibles. One, the one bad time that like has ever happened. Wow. I mean, this is like an anti-drug commercial right here. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Factor myth, you guys already know this because I think I already shared it. Marijuana can cause psychosis. Yes. Fact, marijuana is associated with worsening of uh, psychotic symptoms in people who have them. Uh, Factor myth, marijuana has medicinal or therapeutic value. That's a fact yes. for sure. That is, that is a fact. Three FDA approved uh, uses for cannabis or cannabis derived products are number one, nausea and vomiting related to chemotherapy. I think this is its historic strong suit. Also, anorexia related to advanced HIV and AIDS. Um, that's so people who are not eating who are experiencing wasting syndrome. Um, and it's also approved for some rare types of childhood epilepsy. Oh, yeah. I did a project on it at school about that. And then I've witnessed it help with cancer to, for someone that mm -hmm. like they were only supposed to have a few months left and she lived over two years from like just being able to eat and have energy from it, you know? Yeah, it's incredible. So, yeah. And uh, when my cat was dying, you oh, gave yeah. me some uh, drops to the give THC to the cat. Drops. And, and they the, worked, right? It did help her during that time. I mean, you know, yeah, for I mean, little brief shots, but yes. Yeah. Yes. 